<laughs> Good morning. Welcome Good morning. to everyone who came this morning, and welcome to those who will watch later on the recording. It is so good to be here in God's presence. Please take note in your bulletin. Uh, there is no time for an offering, but if you have money for offering, uh, you may take it to the church office or give it to um, to uh, Virgil. Yeah, my, my mind doesn't always work very well. Okay, today we'll be honoring two high school graduates, Jacob Underwood and Fabian Rosales. Earlier this month, we also honored the high school graduates, Rose George and John Vargas. We are glad to celebrate with them. Nick and Fabri are inviting their Hively friends to a farewell potluck on July 9th, and I invite you to look in the bulletin for details about that. And if you would like to buy some Cafe Justo coffee, uh, please talk to, to Mary, where's Mary? Over here, by the camera. Uh, she has some extras. Our focus for today is from Ephesians 5 where Paul encourages us to speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making music to the Lord with thanksgiving. As I pondered what I would do for this service, I've thought about we could just do what Paul is calling us to do. So we'll be doing what Paul suggested psalms hymns spiritual songs singing and making music with thanksgiving will shape our time together this morning may this time of worship be filled with praise and thanksgiving to god and bring joy and encouragement for our daily walk please turn in your bulletin to the call to worship we'll be begin by reading together and then we'll be speaking to one another so we'll divide into, let's see, your left is over here, <laughs> and your right is over here. So left and right. Um, and then there will be a time of silence, and I invite you to listen and be still and know our God during that time. I'll indicate when we come back together to read together. So reading together. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. Together. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. I invite Walter to come and lead us in our songs. Most of our singing is a prayer. Get right up to it, so it's yeah. Yep. Oh, that's what I was talking about. Yeah, yeah. Or go to the other mic. Yeah, go to the other mic, so that you don't have to do that. Hello. Most of our singing is a prayer, and we start with one, and then not the the second one will not be so much a prayer, it's a confession. 
And uh, but wait till later, and we will keep doing singing that's praying and joyful. So we're just repeating what uh, what Gay said a little while ago, and we'll do it twice. Be still and know that I am God. <laughs>
Good morning. Good morning. Am I on? Okay, here we go. Um, as we all know, peace is a very complicated concept with many dimensions. We can talk about personal peace, family peace, neighborhood peace, peace among nations. Except for personal peace, peace without justice does not fit the biblical concept of shalom. Through a program of Center for Community Justice called Transitional Coaching, I help mentor women who are returning to society from incarceration. This week I met with a 30-year-old woman for the first time. She was in prison for possession and selling of hard drugs, which she's been doing since she was about 15. She is currently on a monitoring ankle bracelet and meets with her supervisor once a week. She is allowed to go to work and has three hours a week to do shopping and other errands, but the rest of the time she must stay in the house. For the imposed use of this ankle bracelet, she must pay $110 a week. That's $440 a month. She's expected to have a job, and she does, but it only pays $11.50 an hour. She's expected to live in a safe, drug-free environment. She has family issues and cannot live with her former drug-using friends. How is it reasonable that she will find a renting situation she can afford and transportation with a job that pays $1,150 while paying $400, $410 a month for her monitoring ankle bracelet? Something is wrong with the judicial system that sets people up for failure. This is not just and does not promote a peaceful community. We must continue to work and speak up for a more just and redeeming penal system in Indiana. Please join me in the litany that's printed in your bulletin. God Lord of peace. peace. Christ of peace, spirit of peace, you are calling us to be peacemakers. Today we light this candle as a reminder of our calling. confession today I would like to pray the Lord's Prayer together this prayer is a prayer of confession of our faith in a loving father a confession of our dependence on God and a confession of our sin in it we also hear words of assurance of God's forgiveness and God's power to save us as we pray the Lord's Prayer together, I invite you to use whatever language speaks to your heart. If you learned this prayer as a child, yet that early memory might be the most important and meaningful version of the Lord's Prayer for you. If you didn't learn it as a child, there are two versions printed in your folder here. Um, that one in English and one in Spanish that might also speak to your heart. Also, I'm inviting you to pray with your body. When I was at MenoCon two years ago, Rachel Miller Jacobs in a workshop presented this way of using our bodies to pray the Lord's Prayer. And I will show you how. It goes something like this. Our Father, by our hearts, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come as it's coming to us, your will be done as it's coming to us on earth as it is in heaven. Give us, all of us, our daily bread. And forgive us our sins and trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And as we do this, we are remembering Jesus on the cross and how our sins were hung with him. Lead us not into temptation. I invite you to lift your leg and be unstable if you are standing or if you're sitting. May you just lift your leg. But deliver us from evil, grounding ourselves in Jesus. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever. And that grasping hands and releasing hands is a way of releasing to God all of this. So I invite you to use that if you would like. You may stand or sit, whatever is comfortable. And let's pray this prayer at, that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art Lord, in heaven, I will be thy name. Your kingdom come, will be done. Our earth is in heaven. Give us this day. I invite the group who is going to be providing special music to come forward. We're going to sing a song of thanks to God.
All right, kiddos, come on up. We've got a nice little blanket up here for you to sit on together so you can cuddle on up and we'll enjoy our kids' time together. Where's little Asa? Come on, buddy. Come on, force and everything. You guys can all come over here. We'll open it up for everybody. Okay. Good to see you all here today. I've been eagerly waiting for this time when we can actually do children's time with children looking back on us instead of at camera. My goodness, you guys have some beautiful faces. Well, I wanted to tell you about, um, I was reading a book recently. Sometimes at the beginning of a book, there will be something called a dedication, where the, the writer sort of dedicates or sort of honors somebody and says uh, basically to them, I wrote this book for you. So this guy said, in the beginning of the book, in the dedication, he says, to my mother, who said, how could you be bored? How many books have you written? That's what she said. And what, what his mom was trying to tell him, and later, of course, he became an author and wrote books. What she was trying to tell him is, when you've got time on your hands, make good use of that time. You can't be bored if you haven't written books yet. We'll do some hiking later. So, have you guys ever been bored? Hopefully not right now in this moment, but yeah. You've, you've been bored before? Yeah. Did, right now. <laughs> I love the truth of children. Um, you've been bored before. Have you ever done anything maybe you weren't supposed to do when you were bored? Has that ever happened? Or you guys always do really productive and good things when you're bored? You do good stuff. All right, kids. Well, sometimes some of us don't do the best things when we were bored. We, we tend to get into trouble or pick on a sibling or, I don't know, do stuff that we're not supposed to. And in Ephesians, in this book that Pastor Tim's going to talk about, Paul basically says the same thing that this guy's mom said to him. He said, make good use of the time, the time that you have. So yesterday, I want to tell you guys about some people that at times maybe didn't always make good use of the time. I went to a place, uh, maybe you guys don't know, but our church actually supports something called the jail ministry here in, in Elkhart County. Now, maybe you guys have heard of jail. Um, jail, <laughs> maybe the simplest description I can give is, uh, you guys ever been in a timeout before? Yeah, we've all probably sat in a timeout. Time out, or jail is a little bit like time out for us adults, where we, we sit for a while and we, we think about maybe some of the choices that we made, and it's a little bit more complicated than that, but in general, that's a little bit what it's like. But it was really cool. I went to this thing, it was a retreat for these guys that had, had maybe been in this jail, this adult time out for a really long time. And it was awesome to hear their stories of what they learned from God during that time. Because you know what? Some of these guys learned to make really good use of that time. One of the guys even got a college degree while he was in jail. That means he, he was taking classes, he was studying, he was reading books, he was doing all sorts of stuff, making great use of that time. And by the time he got out, he had a degree. And a lot of these guys, one of the cool things that they came to do when they were in, in jail was to get to know Jesus a little bit. And in getting to know Jesus, it, it started to change them. So let me tell you about one of them. One of the things we did yesterday was that we, we went around and we prayed for everyone that was there. So the whole group went around and laid hands on, on different people and they, they gave us a prayer request and then we would, we would pray for them. And one of the guys that asked for a prayer, his name was Bobby. Bobby had, had tattoos all over his arms and he had told us that when he was in jail, and I think even before, he was part of this, this gang or this group uh, called the, the Dirty White Boys, which is a weird name, yeah, but it's uh, what we would call maybe a, a white supremacist group. It's a group that believes that, that white people are sort of better than all other kinds of people. Um, people that have darker skin, uh, people that are minority groups, they, they, they believe that. So he was, he was part of this group when he was, he was in jail. And he was sitting there, Bobby was sitting there getting prayed for, and there were lots of people putting their hands on, on Bobby, praying for him. And there was a fellow standing here right next to him named Alex. And Alex couldn't quite like squeeze in to get to get a good hand on, 
on Bobby's shoulders. He was kind of, you know, trying to put his hand on his arm, um, trying to get as close as he could, uh, but he wasn't quite getting in there. And I was, I was watching this, and then I was closing my eyes, kind of listening to the prayers. And then the next time I opened my eyes, I saw Bobby had had reached up. He he could tell that Alex was having a hard time getting getting a hand on him. He reached up and he was holding Alex's hand. So Alex and Bobby were holding hands, and Alex was was praying for Bobby with probably with tears in his eyes. And what was really cool about that moment was that Bobby, this guy who was part of this this gang that looked down on other people of color and minority groups, well, Alex was a black brother of his. And so here was here was this guy, Alex, black brother, praying for this guy who had been part of this this white supremacist group and who was holding hands and he was loving on him and he was praying for him. And I thought in that moment, man, that's what, that's what Jesus can do for us, right? So these guys who were, who were in prison, who were in jail, they made some really good use of that time. They got to know Jesus and it started to change them so that, that the people that they were, they were holding hands with, the people that they were near, started to look different than them. It started to look a little bit more like maybe what Jesus wants us all to look Brothers and sisters who are, are different colors sitting together, singing songs together. That's what we're going to hear about a little bit later, too, that one of the beautiful things we can do is sing songs together. Bobby and Alex were singing songs together yesterday. This is what it means to make good use of the time and to have Jesus be the center of our lives. So I hope, my prayer is for you guys, as moments like this come up where maybe you're bored, like Caitlin, I'm so sorry. But as, as these moments come up where, where you're bored, you maybe hear those words of that guy's mom and you think, gosh, how could I make good use of the time? Uh, if I'm feeling bored right now, what, what could I do to, to use this time better? Just like our, our friends who were in jail and they got degrees and they learned to love Jesus, and they learned to love each other when they were in there. I hope that you guys learned to make good use of that time. All right, let's pray and then you guys can head back to your seats. God, we thank you for Bobby, we thank you for Alex, we thank you for stories of ways in which our brothers and sisters have learned to make good use of the time that has been given them. And when you become part of that time in our lives, God, things can really change inside of us. It can change in the world around us. So I pray that our little ones here would learn this lesson way earlier than most of us adults have learned it, and that they would know how to use their time as best they can whenever they're feeling bored whenever they don't have something to do they would maybe turn to you and think what would what would god have me do in these moments how can i love on other people how can i um, love on myself in ways that, that make me better and make the world better so please be with them god fill their time with good and beautiful things thank you for all of their wonderful faces and lives we ask these things in jesus name amen Thank you guys for being so patient. You can go back to your seats now. Oh, by mistake, a, uh, a little, uh, what, a, a, a song was left out of our service that is in the back of your packet when in our music God is glorified. And so I ask you to turn and invite Walter to come forward and lead us in that song now. Thank you. We're going to sing verses one, two, four, and five. And the third one is reserved for when we do communion. So
scripture this morning will be read by by Jacob Underwood and Jake Hess. de Efesios capítulo 5 versículos 14 hasta 20 o 15 hasta 20 así que tengan cuidado de su manera de vivir no vivan como necios sino como sabios aprovechando al máximo cada momento oportuno porque los días son malos por tanto no sean insensatos sino entiendan cuál es la voluntad de, del Señor no se aborrechen con vino que lleva al desenfreno. Al contrario, sean llenos del Espíritu. Anímense unos a otros con salmos, himnos y canciones espirituales. Canten y alaben al Señor con el corazón, dando siempre gracias a Dios, el Padre por todo, en el nombre de nuestro Señor Jesucristo. La palabra de Dios, gracias a Dios. My mother-in-law, Ivana King, Jan's mom, had both a treasured and precious and sometimes annoying habit. I first noticed it in 1996 or 1997 when Jan and her two sons and I and my two sons and Paul and Ivana, Jan's parents, made a trip together uh, cross-country driving to Grand Lake, Colorado. It became more pronounced as she was older. The habit was this, she would hum or quietly sing hymn after hymn, the Mennonite hymnal playlist from her head and heart while we were traveling. It was precious at one level, but sometimes I wanted a little something else. My playlist is a little different. It's, you know, a little more rock and roll, a little more country and Americana and gospel music. And this was the Mennonite hymnal playlist. It was treasured, though, because it reminded me always of this passage. Be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, making melody to the Lord in your heart. Your heart and soul were formed by these songs. It is well with my soul, she'd sing. And it was. She carried the with her. saying, Ivana has such a sweet spirit about her. And I think she passed some of that on to her daughter, though so far her daughter hasn't begun to hum incessantly from the passenger seat. <laughs> Thanks be to God. <laughs> Here, as Paul reaches the end of the letter to the Ephesians, Paul is saying, be strangers no more, to be, to be strangers no more, you need to make the most of whatever your times are, stay alert and wise. And you do that through the corporate life of a beloved community and via worship, praise, and gratitude, including humming hymns and songs, even if it's a little annoying, because it will form you. I want to begin with verses 15 and 16 in the phrase, making the most of the time. In 
Greek, many of you probably know this, but in Greek there are two words for time. Chronos, which is sequential time, like 15 minutes, an hour, but you know, a day, whatever that sequential time is. And kairos. The word used here is kairos. And it more maybe can be talked about as a fully lived moment, and moments when you are fully alert, such that time almost stands still. You're so fully there in whatever activity, event, or person that you're with that you lose track of time. When you're doing something you're born to do or witnessing an event with people that's so full of meaning and pointing toward God's reign, like Jake in the jail with the, with the uh, brothers from, from the jail yesterday. That would be a Kairos moment where the veil between heaven and earth is made thin. And one of that prayer that we pray on earth as in heaven seems almost close at hand. Make the most of these moments is what Paul is saying. And why? Because the days are evil. Now that can sound kind of apocalyptic to us, kind of like end times. And it was, because they thought that's what it was. And it can feel that way now in some ways, because there is an urgency to our times with climate change cultural upheaval, divisions that exist, it can feel like an urgent moment. The Ephesian context and Paul's letters generally refer to the evil, day, the evil days, refer to the age of dominance by systems of oppression that God's reign is in the process of overcoming. Those were religious, political, relational, economic. They needed resisted and alternatives needed presented. In Ephesus, that included the um, occult of, of the goddess Diana, which the, part of the problem with it was it often, uh, it often, well, it had two sides. On one hand, the good side, it was it, it, it um, promoted a significant role for women in the society. On the negative side, because it also talked about fertility, it also promoted promiscuity. So it was, it was a mixed deal. And the Roman Empire, which provided many good things, but also had military violence at kind of its core understanding of power and the deification of Caesar. And then there were also some extreme Jewish sects that were affecting the church, either by being harshly law-centered or with its extreme asceticism and self-denial. We have, if you haven't noticed, lots of dominating systems of oppression to deal with. Greed and capitalism run wild. The control that can exist in, in more um, domineering styles of government, whether that's communist or whether that is um, leaders that are... All of a sudden the word isn't there and I don't remember, but you know what I mean. Tyrants. <laughs> Tyrants. Consumerism, racism, sexism, to name a few. And here's what it says, it says that we resist by making the most of the moments where we see God's reign breaking in. The kind of moments Jake experienced yesterday and other ones, whether it's in worship or however that might be. And it goes on to say that we do this by being careful, not cautious, but full of care for one another, full of care for the moments, working together and thinking it through and wisely, and it doesn't just mean common sense, but the wisdom of Jesus of aware vulnerability, the counterintuitive way of the cross, wisdom that understands a different source and way of power, that we are part of a larger story, God's reign and the story of all creation being redeemed and made whole. And with wisdom, wisdom associated with the life of the spirit, being rooted in our stories, and the songs of God and of our community. Meanwhile, foolishness is equated here with drunkenness, not being quite in our right mind, wandering to and fro, reeling and weaving, not rooted in anything firm, not rooted in love and care for the well-being of all creation. Secondly, I just want to note the corporate nature of the life of the Spirit here and of the whole letter. There is a beloved community, and there is a beloved community way to go through life, and it is formative. Little of the letter is addressed to individuals. There are some, but it's, it's kind of in, because these are individuals who have been formed by the community. 
Most of it is to the body of Christ, the fellowship of followers of Jesus who are seeking beloved community in the world around them. Our society, especially Western Christianity, seems to have, in recent years, come to value individuality over community and the common good, rather than holding them together. This letter calls for holding them together to allow the community to have a significant role in our formation individually and as a community. Finally, worship, praise, and gratitude, the singing of songs, the making melody in our heart, are formative and orient us, again, both as a community and as individuals. My mother-in-law individually hummed hymns that were her community's playlist. The values and stories that she sang with the community became her values story and playlist. Worship is when we get together and remember whose we are and who we are by recounting the stories, singing the songs, and connecting them with our stories. Praise is when we lift up God for who God is, the gracious creator parent, the one who gives us this, who gives us this vision and story and embodies it, having moved in with us in Jesus Christ. And gratitude is when we say thank you to God for the good gift of life and creation and recognize them as gifts. And as we see today, songs is one of the ways that we do that. And the more we can expand that, that playlist culturally and in style and stylistically and in terms of the stories that are told in them, the more the reign of God will get rooted in our hearts. Doing these in our songs and stories forms us. If we are to be strangers no more, a complicated family, but rooted and grounded in love, even when unity is hard and where we make room for anger and working through it, we will keep alert and alive to the reign of God moments, allowing ourselves to be formed by the beloved community, by the followers of Jesus, and by praising God and expressing gratitude for the wonderful and diverse gift of life that is valued in the reign of God. When this happens, and as we walk with others in helping this happen, we are no longer strangers here, but walking in accord with the giver of life in this wonderfully diverse world. Amen. Let's pray together. Gracious God, you are the one who calls us into a community that this local one where we follow Jesus, but also even more broadly for those who are after your heart and who carry love in their hearts. Be with us as we make that journey together as a small community and in our broader community with brothers and sisters from other faiths, with with people across the spectrum, that through the love of Jesus we will form that community with others as well. May we share our stories and sing songs together, remember you together, remember that we are yours, and may that ground us and root us in love. And do it so, so well that we can make it through the hard stuff work in our lives, we pray. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Jake's going to come and lead us in the time for a couple of our graduates. All right. Well, unfortunately, one of our grads is not here with us today, but Jake will have to come up, and then I think Greg is going to share a little bit about Fabian, who's not with us today, um, and just share some reflections or blessings on him, and then we'll move we'll on to Jake. So. If you know Fabian very well, you know he will do anything to avoid being the center of attention. That, that, this was something we really wanted, but he was very uncomfortable, and so uh, I think Grace meant saying, no, don't do something that you, that's going to cause a lot of anxiety. But 
I um, want to say that we have no idea for all the youth that have flown, uh, been part of our church what kind of impact that has had on them. We don't see that all now. And I think we need to continue to um, have faith and pray that um, some of the experiences here at Hively will be ongoing. Uh, we contacted Say Jin, who had a special relationship with Fabian, and she wrote a few things, and I would like to read those. When I think of Fabian, two words come to mind, beauty and kindness. When I first met Fabian, he was a rather shy child, not very outspoken or loud, but mostly blending into the background. When he'd engage in anything artistic, however, he'd come alive. I had the privilege to witness this firsthand when I led an art group for the Hively Youth. Fabian's keen sensitivity to beauty and creativity was a joy to see. Over the next several years, I felt Fabian and I developed a special connection as fellow artists, sharing our projects with each other and dreaming about art schools together. It's been a real pleasure to see Fabian grow into the strong and gifted artist he is now, and I hope he continues to pursue his dreams into the future. I was also blessed to experience Fabian's kindness during a difficult in my time in my life when I struggled with my mental health. Fabian drew a picture of me as a lamp shining on a field of flowers, representing how I shared myself with others, even as I experienced my own struggles. Then she says, Fabian, I have been touched and inspired by you. May you continue to touch the lives of others around you, making the world a bit more beautiful and kind. Congratulations on your graduation and blessings as you continue to grow with yourself. And I think that's true. Um, as we reach out to others, that comes back to us in many ways. And I think Beth and I have experienced that with Fabian and his family in many different ways. His plans are to go to Ivy Tech this next year. He's going to be um, studying like graphics. And I think he hopes to go um, to IUPUI. Even in Fabian's absence, we're remembering him and we'll share with him what uh, Satan wrote. And for those that might be interested in visiting him, he does still work at Big B.
Jake, we are uh, super proud of you. Um, I mean, getting through high school is not an easy thing for anyone, let alone when, yeah, you overcome some of the hurdles and obstacles that you have. So that's a really admirable thing, and we honor you for, for that. And we pray that some of those lessons that you learned along the way of like patience and learning to endure through, through hard times, we pray that those lessons uh, would continue to stay inside of you. Because uh, this is just the first step on the bigger journey, right? Uh, you've made a pretty long journey to this point, and then a bigger journey begins. And so some of those same lessons that learning to be patient, learning to like fight through hard times, learning to trust others, learning to tell the truth, learning to uh, confess, learning to have joy, all of this stuff, yeah, you're gonna need for the for the road. So make sure you pack a backpack and throw some of these things in there to bring with you, because um, we all need these things for the road. But we are uh, blessed and thankful for the way that you continue to be part of our community during all of this. We're we're not sure why that has been, but we're thankful that you just kept showing up and kept coming back and uh, always sharing with us what what you're going through. You're always quick to um, open up to us. Uh, and let us know where you were at. And I think it's been a real blessing to all of us. So. I, I started off here. Well, yeah, you, you started off as a little one here, that's true. But uh, we're thankful that you've, you've continued with us. And it's been a joy to, to see you grow. And we pray that uh, as you stay in this area, and maybe we'll, we'll continue to see you connecting with us in the years ahead. And, uh, yeah. other graduates at the beginning of, of the, the month, uh, the thing that we wanted you guys to, to take with you, that we wanted you to, to have on, on the road ahead, is that above all else, that you would know Christ, that you are deeply beloved by God, uh, and that you would live out all of your life from, from that place of that knowledge by all of us, yes, but before us, by God. So, I'll, I'll give the blessing that Paul gave to, to the Ephesians. He said, I pray that you, being rooted and grounded in love, would have the power to understand or to grasp, along with all God's holy people, what is the width and the length and the height and the depth of the love of Christ. And that you would know that love that surpasses knowledge, so that you could be filled with all the fullness of God. So that's our prayer for you, then. We're proud of you, and we are thankful for you being part of our community and blessing us with your presence. So, yeah. Amen. Amen. That's what a way of telling us also that uh, the Eucharist, the blessing of God in communion, is always central. So whether you're taking part or imagining it, as you are here, uh, please follow along. We, we're going to go into the benediction after this anyway, so why don't you stand already? We're learning a new song, and uh, some of us already practiced it together to, to help us. And if nothing else, by the time you, you look at the beginning of the second verse, you'll know, just keep learning. So we're going to do one, two, four, and five. Aren't we going to sing through the first four then one time? Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. So we'll, we'll start with one and then start again with one and two, four, six, two, four, five. I've helped that power.
Kairos moments, telling the stories and making melody in your hearts to God. Amen. <laughs>